you talk about clues and one of the clues when we're trying to figure out our purpose you teach in your book is what is that thing that bothers you or burdens you that may be unlike the people around you it may not bother those people around or it may but you said that that's a clue um as to why you're here maybe you you said in your book that maybe you're the person that's supposed to solve that problem. Can you kind of speak to that a little bit? Help us find the clues because some people are like, they're they're listening to you right now and it's kind of turned to something within them. Like, man, you know what? I'm 25, I'm 35, I'm 40. Like I need to be figuring out why I'm here. So talk about some of those clues. That's strong, man. Yeah. So basically in the book, I talk about four clues. Cause so, man, and it's one of the reasons I wrote the book, bro, because so many people are so confused about this. It's actually, it was actually a little scary. You know what I mean? And I found, I, I think I found out more of people's confusion about this when I got into the coaching space, more so than I did in the pastoral space, because people aren't always as transparent in mm -hmm. church. So that's a completely different, um, <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, I don't know if there's this religious pressure, this facade or whatever, but they are not the most vulnerable. But when I got into coaching space, right, that's when, you know, to help people experience transformations, I, they were just way more transparent. I saw, man, it's way too many people that are just not clear on this. And so I just came up like, hey, these are four things to think through to make it really simple. And one of them, which is what you're referring to is something I call unique discontent. <laughs> and when I say discontent, I feel like I call that like a divine agitation. I'm like, yo, this is something that uniquely bothers you. And, and this is what I mean. Me and you both can walk in a room, right? And you see something, it bother you. And it not bother me at all right i'm straight <laughs> but for you you're like i gotta pick that up i gotta pick that up i, I can't i gotta pick that up it's, it's just just bothering you and one of the things that i say is this that's a clue that's an indication because purpose is the creation of a thing purpose is the reason for the creation or existence of a thing right but the, the reason for the creation or existence of a thing is to solve a problem. So purpose is the answer to a problem. Whenever somebody creates something, it solves a problem. This mic I mentioned earlier, it solves like a volume problem. So the problem that agitates you the most might be the problem you've been created to solve, <laughs> you know? And so that's a clue for people. It's like, man, what stuff do you look out in the world? And it's just like, this just bothers me. And it's, it's incessant. And it's resilient and it's stubborn and it won't leave me alone. I think, I think that's one of the clues. So like for me, one of the things that breaks my heart is that people is for people who want to change, who want to elevate, who want to optimize and they can't, that, that bothers me. So I, they can be on their way to heaven and I'm still bothered that they're not experiencing more of heaven on earth. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's it, man. It's, it's that unique discontent. Is there room for grace and is there room for grind on the journey to discovering your purpose? Here's my heart behind this, because as, as you're talking, I'm just kind of looking over my timeline and in high school, football player, box of scholarship opportunities. But suddenly in 12th grade, I didn't want to play football anymore. So I never went on a, on a school visit didn't take any scholarships, went into the military. Now in high school, you couldn't tell me I wasn't going to go to NFL, but all of a sudden God switched it, went into the military for 12 years. And you couldn't tell me I wasn't going to be the next Colin Powell, but then God switched it at year 12. Then I went into education and I thought, you know, I'm going to go all the way up to superintendent. I'm going to make a change that way in the, in the education world. And I got all the way to assistant, assistant principal about to be uh, on the verge of becoming a principal and God switched it. Now here I am as a pastor, in addition to what we do with his and her money, and I'm looking back, I'm like, I use stuff from each one of those in this current assignment. It means that that wasn't wasted. It means that it was a piece of the puzzle that I'm supposed to use. And this may be a piece for a future puzzle, but I think that for when, when you have that purpose conversation, if you don't feel like you're in it in totality today, you're like, man, what am I, I need, I need to do X, Y, and Z. I'm not doing what the Lord wants me to do, but it's a journey. So there has to be room for grace, but there still has to be room for the grind. You still have to be putting in the work of, of trying to do what you feel that you're called to do. So as we're walking down this path, how do we navigate the frustration that we may feel as though 
I'm not walking in the fullness of what God called me to be. How do I have grace for myself? But then also know that I'm on a journey that I still need to be working and grinding my way towards the ultimate goal of being who God created me to be. Man, I love that. And I, th I think you're so spot on. So yeah. I, th so is there room for both? 100%. So grind, which would be works, right? To me is an expression of faith. And that's what separates faith from like optimism. So some stuff we call faith is like optimism. If there's no action, it's not faith. It's optimism, right? And I don't want to go down a rabbit trail there, but the your willingness to build an ark is evidence that you believe is going to rain. If you're not building an ark, you don't believe it's going to rain. Your actions are telling you something about what you really believe. And most people don't know what they believe. <laughs> and when I say that, I mean, anyway, so the, the point that I'm making is, yes, man, there is room for both. Uh, but you hit on something that I just think is so, so important. And I talk about this in the book, too. I believe it's one of the most important parts of the book is one of the most clarifying aspects, I think, of the book when it comes to this conversation about purpose. So let's go back to you being in military. Some people will say, I'm in the military. I'm on my way to my purpose. I'm saying you are in it. Because what you were doing is this is this. There are three things I talk about in the book. You got to be clear on calling, role and purpose. So God calls us to certain roles in certain seasons and your willingness to say yes to the role, which is a set of responsibilities he gives you, your, your willingness to say yes to the responsibilities that you've been given in that certain, in that certain season is what keeps you on path or on track for purpose. So your life's purpose comprises a number of yeses, not just one yes. You had to say yes to military. You had to say yes to education. Then you had to say, am I making sense? So, so God calls you to different roles. And so your faithfulness to those roles in, in that season was a part of your purpose. There's a contribution you made to people in the military when you were there. And there was, there was some contributions that that experience made for you. Then in education, there's some difference you made when you were there, which is part of God's plan for your life. But it also shaped you. And now that you're in what one of my leadership coaches uh, would call your sweet spot, which is you peaking now. My pastor calls it LeBroning. You LeBroning now, where it's like all of this stuff and all of these. So you got these experience. You got enough time in the game to have all these experiences, but you got enough time ahead of you to have the energy to do something with it. That's that sweet spot. So you peeking now, you LeBron, and it's when you Billy Graham in the stadiums, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so I think most people confuse their sweet spot with their whole purpose. When your sweet spot is just the season in your purpose where you're peaking, because once you move out of that, you move into legacy, which is, which is just as much as a part of your purpose. So Billy Graham doing stadiums, he peaking. That's the sweet spot for people going to North Carolina to sit with him at his ranch. That's legacy and both of his purpose. One's more popular, but it's all purpose. Yeah, man, that's so good. So good. Now, a lot of people that listen to our show are in relationships or married. Uh, you're a, a husband and a father. So I'm curious, not even like the right now conversations, but the, the conversations over the years that you and your wife Shamika have had as, as you've been trying to figure out and walk out your purpose, as she's been trying to figure out and walk out her purpose, how do we have healthy conversations within the context of a relationship about our journey, about what we feel the Lord is, is calling us to? How do we have those healthy, deep conversations with our significant other? Oh, man. I, I don't want to say... Cause I, I don't want to cause any controversy. Sometimes I can say things that are, that are <laughs> we welcome it. Let's go. But you know, it's hard to have, it's hard to do that. Right. If you pick wrong. Ooh -wee. And there are some people who have, and I'm not even gonna call it theology an ideology of sovereignty that assumes that every pick you make is God's. And I just, you, if you apply, you don't, we don't apply that logic anywhere else except for relationships. 
You know what I mean? <laughs> and, you know, I think like when I look at Abram, uh, Abraham getting ready to pick somebody for Lot, he gives this, an uh, Isaac, I'm sorry, getting ready to pick somebody. He gives the servant criteria. He was like, yo, don't pick from here. Look for this, 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 this. Because there is such a thing as com calling compatibility. Calling compatibility. compatibility. Yeah. Make sure y'all yeah. write that down. Yeah, it's like, and so which is why you want people to, you want to have a sense of your assignment. And that's, and I'm going to answer your question because that's one thing I got early. I got a sense of my assignment early. So I had a sense of where I was going. So I knew who to put in a car with me. So I literally, no, no, bro. I literally, I literally, by the time I met my wife, I was, uh, I was going to law school. And so we date, I, I'm, so we were, we were dating, we were in college. So I knew I was going to go to law school. So bro, we dating and I'm like, Hey, I'm gonna go to law school. I'm gonna do this, but I'm also in ministry. So da da da. And like, so I shoot real straight. So I'm like, Hey, after college for the next three years, I'm gonna be broke. <laughs> you know, it's just like, wow, I need you to know that. Because I need to see if you're the kind of, why? Because God gave me responsibility to tend the garden before you got here. Like I was clear on my assignment before you got here. So even though I love you and I want you to be a part of my life, I can't make an idol out of you. So I'm going to be broke <laughs> for the next three years. Are you cool with that? And I'll never forget, man. My roommate at that time, who actually works now in one of our companies, like uh, this is a long time ago. He was sitting on the couch with <laughs> and she was like literally in the kitchen doing something. She was like, that's cool. I'll support you where you go to law school. My roommate looked over me and looked at me, looked over at me and mouth and said, she the one. <laughs> so that picking man, that picking part is right. It's so important because those conversations are a little easier when you're just with someone who's compatible with your calling, if not, you're just going to have to have, you know, as much wisdom, as much tact as you have. And hopefully this person has character traits that are open and amenable to, you know, embracing some things that they just don't understand, you know, but that's a, I, I feel like, I just feel like the, I feel like the pick is 70% of that. Ooh. It's because it's some people. Listen, I've been doing this thing a long time, bro. It's some people. It doesn't matter how you say it; they're not gonna get it. 